housekeeping items. Um, so if you're logged in, um, we can see your names um, and one person's calling in. If you would like to ask questions, uh, if you could do that in the question box um, and everybody on the panel, anybody that's logged in can see your question. You can also um, upvote your question. So if you see a question that you also have and you just want to tag to it, you can click on it and move it up. Um, and so during the webinar, I will be, I have a screen. Vince is here with me in the office, uh, in the webinar room, and he's helping me with the questions. So as we see questions come up, if I can answer them and incorporate them in the webinar, I will do so. And if I can't, I will respond back to you via email. So if there are uh, questions that you have specific to your EPP um, and, you, and you ask them, make sure that I have some way of knowing who it is. So either you've logged in with your email so I know how to respond back, or if you're logged in anonymously and you want to have a response to your answer, answer to your question, then if you just put in parentheses your email or your name so I can you know, figure out who to send the answer to. That would be great. So I'll be going through any open questions at the end um, and answering them via email if I don't uh, incorporate them in my presentation. So just, just for you to know. And remember all panelists see all the questions. So, um, and we're recording this webinar so it will be posted on the YouTube channel um, later today or tomorrow. So if there's anybody at your EPP that was unable to make the webinar, you can um, share that link with them and they can uh, walk, walk through this webinar as well. Um, so, okay, so this is the probation visit webinar. So all of you were invited because you have probationary status. Um, and some of you are going through this current semester in the spring and some of you are a few semesters out. So I tried to send invitations to all the folks in the next three semesters that uh, may have probationary visits. So um, the reason that you're on a probationary visit is because you had a, um, one of your standards was not met. So one of the five CAPE standards was not deemed to be not met, and you received a two-year term from the Accreditation Council um, at the last, uh, when the Accreditation Council made their decision on your term. And a probationary visit is a physical site visit um, in two years from the Accreditation Council decision. So um, a physical team will be uh, coming to campus again to do your probation visit. Um, they will also make recommendations to the Accreditation Council to determine if the standard is now met. Um, the Accreditation Council makes that decision about standards being met. The team makes recommendations about AFIs and stipulations. So um, that process is the same. So uh, the Accreditation Council is the final step in our process for probation visits. So know that teams are just making preliminary recommendations to the Accreditation Council for a final decision. Um, probation visits are uh, comprised of two site visitors. One is the lead and one is a site, regular site visitor or reviewer. Um, if it's a joint state uh, with CAPE, the state uh, folks are included on the correspondence as well as present um, on the visit. So it's just like a standard joint visit. Um, and so those state folks are, are connected in AIMS through all the correspondence. So they will be there if you are a joint state. So the process for a probation visit is exactly the same as it is for a standard site visit. So um, this process is, is the same if you were going through a seven year accreditation cycle, right? So your template opens 18 months prior to your visit semester. And right now all the shells are open, templates are open through fall of 21 visits. So um, for most of you that are in this status, your shell should be open at this point. Um, your self-study report is due to CAPE nine months prior to your visit, and that's the same timeline as it is for a standard visit. The team is formed. Um, they review your self-study report. Uh, the formative call is scheduled with the, with the team. They go through and, and discuss the report. They finalize the formative feedback report and submit that to the EPP within five months prior to the visit. And then you have the opportunity to write an addendum. So you have a self-study addendum. And that is uh, due 60 days uh, after you receive your formative feedback report. So you have 60 days to write an addendum. Uh, your site visit report uh, is what's the team is completing on site. So once your addendum is submitted, the team will review that. And when they're on site, they will be writing um, a site visit report. 
and they have 30 days from the site visit um, to provide their report to CAPE. And then um, after the editing that's submitted to the um, EPP as a draft, uh, you have seven days to do factual corrections and that's the same as a regular visit. Then the final uh, site visit report is submitted uh, within seven days of the, uh, it's actually the site visit or the, the factual corrections, depending on um, if you're doing factual corrections. Um, and then you have 30 days from that point in order to do a rejoinder. And the rejoinder response from the lead, they have two weeks after they receive your rejoinder. And then all of that goes to the accreditation council, which meets twice a year. So if your probation visits in the fall, your decision will be made in the spring. And if your probationary visits in the spring, the accreditation council will make its final decision in the following fall. So the process is exactly the same. Um, it's just the difference in what you're re actually responding to. So as you go through, if you have any questions that, uh, that you have about the process, not about the webinar, uh, feel free to, to contact me. I'm the case manager for all the probation visits. So, um, so I will be talking with you, I'm sure, as we move through this process. My email is here. That's the best way to get in touch with me is through email. Um, so again, if you have questions about the process or individual uh, EPP type questions, feel free to uh, send me an email. So one of the big questions is what do I address in my probation self-study report? So you're addressing all the components in the unmet standard. So I want to say that again, all the components of the unmet standard and any stipulations from any of your met standards. So if you happen to have some stipulations that are in other uh, standards, you do need to address those. What you do not address are AFIs in other MET standards. So if you have AFIs listed in other standards, then you'll be addressing those in your annual reports each year, not in your probation visit. So I wanted to go through an example of what you would be responding to if this particular situation happened. So if you have an unmet standard, and that's standard five, and let's say you had stipulations in 5.1 and 5.2, and you have a stipulation in a MET standard from standard three, and let's say it's 3.1, as well as MET standard one in component 1.5. So you have an unmet standard, standard five, and you have two stipulations that reside in MET standards, right? So your probation visit self-study will cover all the components of standard five, 5.1, 5.2, 5.3, 5.4, and 5.5. And I want to be clear that you may have stipulations in 5.1 and 5.2, but you're to address all of the components in that unmet standard. So in that case, there may be some AFIs in some of the other components of standard five that you actually will be addressing because you're addressing all the components. Okay? So you'll, you'll do all of standard five and you'll address the stipulation in 3.1 and the stipulation in 1.5. So you'll have three sort of big buckets that you're gonna have to address in this example. All of standard five, the stipulation in 3.1 and the stipulation in 1.5. Okay, so what does that look like in AIMS? So when you log into AIMS and you, and, and one sort of note of, uh, caution is at the top of your tab there is a semester tab and that tells you which semester you're looking at so if you were to choose for example spring of 18 if that was when your your visit was it's going to give you all that information from that visit in spring of 18 so you're going to have to click that and and select the the next template right so that may be spring of uh, 20 or fall of 21 or whenever your probationary visit is. So you'll need to make sure that you're looking at the correct template. And when you click on that template, it will look very, it will look exactly like it does in a seven year visit. So when you look at it, there are a few things that you'll have to um, copy over or bring over into this report. So one um, is 
There are the preliminary items, so the items kind of before the standard, so the EPP overview and program characteristics, your clinical educator qualifications, your parity table, all of that information that is prior to the standards, you can pull from your previous report and kind of cut and paste those in. So we're not asking you to do a new parity table or uh, you know, new EPP overview. You're able to use the pieces from your previous report um, there. The only thing that may change is if you have program characteristics that may be different or you need to update your clinical educator qualification table. Um, those things are fine, but for the most part, you'll be able to take those from your previous report. So in a probation visit, you also do not address technology and diversity crosscuts. So you're really only focusing on the unmet standard and any stipulations. So you're not having to address technology and diversity uh, crosscuts in your probation report. They, may, they will show up in your template, but you do not have to address them. And review teams understand that. They know that they are part of the set template. And so they know that you don't, you don't need to address them. If you want to put a little sentence in there, you can say these are not addressed in a probation visit. That's fine. If it, somehow that kind of makes you feel better that there's no empty blocks um, in your report, that's fine to do that as well. The uh, AIMS template looks the same in terms of the narrative and the evidence upload function. So you'll be doing the same, uh, putting in your narrative, it has the same character count. Um, and then the evidence is that you want to tag to that, you will tag them the exact same way that you did in your previous report. Um, and then the process is the same in terms of the templates, the formative feedback, the site visit report, addendum and rejoinder. So all the uh, components are the same there. So um, I wanted to make a note about the site visit teams. So, um, so one question is, the site visit team for your probation visit is not the same team that completed your previous review. And in fact, it has no common elements. So there's no person that was on your original review that will be on your probation review. So they, they don't have any context for your EPP, right? They were not on the original visit. And that team is not briefed from the about the previous review or have contact with the previous team. So these are, these are brand new folks um, to, your, to your case. They are not existing folks that may have, um, you know, served previously on a site visit. Um, teams do not have access to previous reports or evidences. This is really important. So when you are creating your new evidences or creating, uh, you know, your new narratives, don't reference previous reports or elements from a previous report or evidences from a previous report because that team does not have access to those. So if you want to bring things over from a previous report and use an evidence or update an evidence, you can do that, but you'll have to upload it in the new um, probation template. So whatever is in that probationary template as evidence as a narrative is what the team is reviewing. So just, just have that in mind that that you're not referring back to any previous documents or evidences. Um, teams are reviewing the probationary narrative and evidence provided in visit. So for example, when in our example where you were, you had unmet standard five, there may be some elements, evidences, narrative that you want to, to use for, let's say, Um, as a guide and do some updates, um, but make sure that that narrative and that evidence is in your probationary visit um, documents, because that way the team has access to that, because they, they are not reviewing um, other information. Some teams will put, uh, some EPPs put their previous report in as an evidence. Um, I, I'm not sure that you need to do that. I think that because you can't parse it out by the areas that you have uh, to address in your probation visit. I'm not sure that's um, a great idea. Um, and again, you want the team to review the narrative and the evidence that you're providing to address the stipulation or the unmet standard. So, um, so I would caution against doing that, uploading a lot of things from a previous report um, as evidences separately. But if you want to, to use them, if, if, if they, you know, had the evidence that you needed and you just need to update them, then those are new evidences in the probation visit and you're gonna upload them as new evidences. Um, and make sure that you name or number or 
um, code them in a way that's new to the probation visit so that it's clear so you're not referencing old numbers or old um, a coding system from the previous report. Um, so, so that was probably, that's one of the bigger questions about site teams and what, what they have access to. So in Ames, when you go in and review your template, um, be aware, you know, go in and take a look and your template's open now so you can actually move some of those preliminary um, EPP overview, parity table, those kinds of documents um, over into your probationary um, template and then just working on the narratives. So when you look at the dropdown for your narratives, it will only have the uh, standards where you have to address something. So it's only, if you only had, for my example, standard five, right, that was unmet, that would be in your template as, as well as standard one and standard three because you had stipulations to address there. But standard two and standard four would not be included in your report because you didn't have stipulations and or un unmet standard. So when you look at it, it's going to be a shorter um, self-study report because it's only dealing with the areas where you need to address. So either a stipulation in a met standard or an unmet standard and all components. So, so one of the things that we've seen in for past probationary visits for the formative is that it's common for EPPs to only address the areas where there were stipulations. So I wanna just make it really clear, say it for the sixth time, that you're addressing all the components of the unmet standard, regardless of whether you have stipulations or AFIs in them. Okay, so this, that whole standard, because it wasn't met, you have to address all the components. So again, if you have any questions, you can contact me. I'm the case manager for probationary visits. And if you have any questions about the process or moving forward, uh, I'm your contact person. So uh, I'm reading a couple of questions from the, from the tab. So if you have a template that's not currently in Ames, um, I can look and check and see why that's not the case. Again, fall 21, uh, all the shells are open. If you have a visit that's after fall of 21, like spring of 21, those shells are not open as of yet. So we're just getting ready to open those. So, um, so just be aware of that. So your site visit date for your probationary visit, once your shell opens, you're free to contact Alexis Neal, who is our um, site visit team coordinator, and you can set a date with her for your actual site visit. So uh, once, once your shell opens, which if you're up until fall 21, if your shell is open, you're uh, welcome to um, contact her and set a time. So if you have um, previous AFIs uh, under uh, NCATE or TIAC, those are not addressed in probation visits. Those were addressed in your original site visit and it will carry through to your following visit. So those are not um, going to be addressed in a probationary visit. So I don't see any other questions coming up. Um, oh, Alexis's contact information. Oh, that was a question. So uh, Vince is gonna type her email in the box so everybody should be able to see that. It's alexis.neal at capenet.org. And again, he's uh, writing that in her, in the chat box. So uh, the, the next question is, will the shell, uh, will you be notified that the shell is open? So yes, uh, there's an automated um, email that you will get uh, that says that your shell is current, is open with instructions um, on how to set your site visit date and, and some other things. So that will automatically be sent when the shell opens. So there's a question about the handbook. So um, the question is, since there is a new handbook, is it okay to use it to build the SSR rationales and evidence? So I wanted to clarify that there is not a new handbook. There is a consolidated handbook that consolidates the in initial and advanced separate handbooks into one handbook. So there is not uh, a lot of difference in the uh, consolidated handbook and the, uh, the two separate handbooks. There is some cleanup that was done and there was some 
um, clarification and the standards are, are presented side by side. Um, so it has a different format and feel, but the actual content has not changed that much. When it is released, it will be for site visits moving forward. Um, you're more than welcome to review it and use it if you, if you feel that that's a better um, uh, format for you to understand everything. But there's, there's not new standards, there's not you know, new requirements, there's not those kinds of things um, provided in that consolidated handbook. And is the state consultant notified when teams uh, uh, visit dates are established? So that's part of the conversation. So the state consultants for our joint um, teams and the EPP and Alexis all work together on um, figuring out what dates are, are uh, acceptable for both of the groups. So that's something that's going on during that process. So, EPPs and states are working together as well as Alexis working with them to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Um, so there's a question about plans. So in your probationary visit, so um, in some of your previous visits, some of the uh, initial standards were able to be phased in or have a phased in plan for. And so the, at the site, the time of your probationary visit, it's whatever was, is in current policy for that semester. So if those, so for example, those phase-ins for initial are going to have lapsed. So there's not gonna be a phase-in opportunity at that point. So when you do your uh, probationary report, you're going to have to have the full um, pieces of evidence that you would need um, without the phase-in. So, um, now again, if you're sort of not there, right, if you can always, you know, have a plan and then your progress steps for how you're, you know, moving forward, and that may result in an AFI, but that's, that's something that the phase-ins are not um, accepted as, as evidence, you know, moving forward. So you'll have to look at the, at the phasing guide and see what's phasing in and what's phasing out. Anything for the advanced standards, they're, they're going to be still in phase-in because they're in phase-in through. Um, 2023, but for most of these visits, they didn't they either didn't have um, advanced programs or that was not where their area for probation was. Okay. It looks like that's all the questions. There's one question about spas that's specific, so I will contact that person specifically about the answer to that. So again, I thank you for spending some time with me this afternoon um, with the webinar. I hope this answered some of your questions as you move forward. I know that you'll have um, 25 more questions for every question that I answered as you get into your own template and, and start the process for yourself. So again, please feel free to contact me. No question is too small. Um, I'm happy to answer and make sure that, um, that you feel comfortable with what you're presenting and that you, uh, you know, have, a, have a good uh, probationary report and, and visit. So please let me know. Thank you so much.